It's great to look good. We all know that. But it doesn't come naturally. Is it more than a cosmetic or a surface difference we're talking about? Yes, it's got to do with your health all your life. And it's related to the amount of calories you take in every day. Many of us are overweight. Just look around. But we don't have to be fat. Knowing what calories are and then applying that knowledge can help us keep trim. Specifically, calories are a measure of energy. The calories we get from food provide us with the energy to breathe, to grow, to live, to do the things we like to do. Where do we get the energy to do all these things? We need calories. We need fuel to run on. If we take in sufficient calories, our bodies will grow and function in good health. Add too many calories, and the excess, what the cells don't need, will be transformed into fat, stored in case of a future food energy shortage. Or, just plain stored. When we talk about calories, we're talking about an amount of energy provided by food. Difference between the gasoline fuel this race car needs and the food fuel we need. Though your body needs fuel just like this engine, you can't turn your motor off. Even when you're asleep, your body is at least in idle. A car can only handle a specific amount of fuel. It can't store extra energy as fat. If it could, the more gas it took in without being driven, the fatter it would get. As its weight increased, the more fuel it would need just to move the extra weight, depending on the size of the engine, its age and basic condition. And the extra weight puts more stress on its parts, possibly shortening its life. Different kinds of foods have different caloric ratings, depending on how much energy they provide when we digest them and use them as fuel. Calories aren't the only way to rate foods. There are different nutrients that people take into consideration. But familiarizing ourselves with what foods are high or low in calories is not difficult. Wet foods are higher in water content than dry foods. So generally, wet foods contain fewer calories. Foods high in fat have more calories than those with none or low fat. Those that are both dry and high in fat have the most calories. But don't trust appearances alone. Some foods that appear wet, like fried chicken or fried potatoes, are high in calories because of the fat they absorb during frying. Many packaged foods today include information about the caloric rating of their product. And it's a good idea to keep a calorie counter in the kitchen for easy reference, so you can compare what you eat to what you need. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fat Game! And now, here's the man of meals with a poor boy's sandwich smile. Melt in the mouth, Marvin! Hey, hey! Hi there, fellow food fans! <laughs> hey, did you all eat a good week? <laughs> well, tonight we've got a special treat. We're going to take a look at the shape of things to come in the life of a very shapely little ass. <laughs> come on out, Bonnie, and meet the folks. How are you, Bonnie? <laughs> Hi there, Bonnie. Yes, this is Miss Bonnie Westy from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And you know what her favorite food is? Are you ready? Are you all ready? Cherry pie a la mode. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bonnie, will you please step into our computerized weight analysis booth right here? There you go. 
As you know, Bonnie's bone structure and basal metabolism is being analyzed while she feeds in information on her physical activity. <laughs> now, our computer is going to analyze her body needs. Now, if all of you folks at home and the people here in the studio audience will watch the magic screen, you'll see her magic numbers. Now, everyone but Bonnie knows just how many calories a day she needs to reach and maintain her ideal weight. Come on out, Bonnie. Come out of the booth. Now, remember, you have 60 seconds to go over there and pick out a daily diet from our tantalizing table. How about that? Yes, now, remember, if you pick 50 calories either side of your magic number, you win a brand new wardrobe. <laughs> yes, and you also get a surprise gift. All right, Bonnie, are you ready? Go right over there, honey. There you go. Now, start the clock. Marvelous, folks. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, Bonnie, I want to tell you, you did a fine job. Now, you step right behind here, right behind our future viewer, so that we can see how you did. Just watch the magic screen. Miss Bonnie Westy has a magic number of 2,100 calories a day. At the five-second warning, she had chosen a diet of 2,050 calories. Oh, no, that was before the candy bar. Right, but the candy bar pushed her up to 2,200 calories. If you continue to eat 100 calories a day over your requirements, Bonnie, you will gain one pound a month. And in five years, you will look like this. Bonnie, we're sorry you didn't win, but for being such a good sport, wasn't she a good sport, folks, huh? Yes, sir, we. Yeah, for being such a good sport, you're going to win a prize anyhow. Yes, ma'am, we're going to give you dinner for two at Ted's Snack Shop in beautiful downtown Lakeview. Uh-huh. <laughs> How can we tell if we're taking in too many calories? Each person with a doctor's help, can determine approximately what his ideal weight is. You can control your weight then by controlling the number of calories you consume. Another way of looking at all this is in terms of weight gain or weight loss. Weighing yourself regularly is an easy method to use. If over a period of time you've gained or lost more weight than is desirable, then you're taking in too many or too few calories. Knowing is one thing. Acting on it is another. The nutritional label is a good place to start if you care about what you eat. And a simple calorie book will tell you the calories in your favorite foods where the label doesn't. Since you need other nutrients besides calories, protein, vitamins, and minerals, you must be selective about what you leave out and must be sure that you get all the nutrients you need. One way of doing this is to reduce your intake of sugar, which contributes only calories and no other nutrients. Or reduce your intake of desserts. Or use skim milk and products from skim milk. Still another way is to reduce the size of portions of your favorite foods, especially high-calorie snacks. Young people usually don't pay much attention to what they eat because there are few visible danger signs. But any person who is overweight at 16 is putting unnecessary obstacles in the path for growth and health. This not only means they get left behind, but they're establishing hard-to-break eating habits.
men becoming good candidates for heart disease, high blood pressure, or diabetes, especially if there is a family history of these diseases. There's nothing to keep you from leading this kind of life as long as you want to, if you don't abuse your body by careless eating. It's just a matter of knowing when enough is enough.